everybody, and welcome to the next installment of the Rocky Mountain Myrex Short Takes on Suicide Prevention podcast. I'm your host, Adam Hoffberg, and I'm really excited to have Dr. Pearl McGee Vincent on the show today to talk about some really exciting updates related to the PTSD Coach app. So Dr. McGee Vincent is a clinical psychologist with the National Center for PTSD, and she's joining us today from San Francisco. So welcome, Pearl. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Maybe we can just start uh, with a little bit of introductions and just getting to know you a little bit and uh, why you're interested in veterans' health and veterans' mental health and suicide prevention. Yeah, so I, um, I started working in uh, VA as a clinical psychology graduate student. It was one of the, um, the training opportunities that came my way, and I just kind of fell in love with it. Um, the training was excellent. I learned that I loved working with veterans. Um, I've since worked with a number of different institutions and always came back to VA. I've worked in three VA healthcare systems now. Um, I've worked for state hospitals, NASA, and now back with the Palo Alto VA and National Center for um, PTSD. And it's really just, I feel like there's no greater honor than to, uh, not to sound cheesy, but to serve those who served and to work with colleagues that really have a shared mission of improving um, the health and mental well-being of veterans. Wonderful. I understand that you're involved with a lot of the mobile tech and especially uh, apps that uh, the VA is developing. I was really excited when I found out that the uh, uh, PTSD coach had a recent update that added some safety planning features into the app. And I was wondering if maybe we could start by just learning a little bit about what is the PTSD coach app and then uh, get into some of those specifics with the suicide prevention component. Yeah, so just by way of background, um, I've been with the National Center for PTSD since 2012 and just started working with our mobile apps team as of 2017. So I'm a fairly new member of the team. Our team was developed many moons ago and our actually first uh, VA app ever was the PTSD Coach app. And um, since then, we've created several apps. I think we have a portfolio of 16, 17, 18. Now I can't keep track. But specifically, PTSD Coach was developed to provide education, in-the-moment coping, uh, resources for connecting to care, crisis resources, tools for tracking symptoms for veterans and members of the public who may have symptoms of PTSD or have experienced trauma or know someone who's experienced trauma. Um, So this has been a really acclaimed app. It's been downloaded in, I believe, over 94 different countries, has over half a million downloads now. And I was awarded funding for a project entitled Expanding the Reach of VA DOD Mobile Apps to Improve Coping and Reduce Suicide Risk um, in 2019. And that's a two-year project. And part of that project is just to expand access to our suite of mobile apps to providers and veterans and service members in both healthcare systems. And the other piece of that was to create a digital or mobile version of the suicide safety plan. Now, many people are, uh, if you're in VA, you're probably familiar, um, if you're in mental health, that the safety plan is a is an intervention that's used with veterans who are um, at risk of suicide. And typically it's done with a provider with um, a paper version of the plan. And the, and the provider and the veteran collaborate to talk about um, suicide risk, warning signs, and just this list of strategies. Like what do we need to have in place so that next time suicidal urges arise, we can prevent that spiral of thinking and activities that that can lead to heightened suicide risk or even a suicide attempt. So what are all of the things that we need to have in place? And it's done in a really collaborative um, manner with the, with the veteran and the provider. Now, the limitation, there's a couple limitations of this traditional method. And um, one of those limitations is that we give the veteran a printed paper copy of their safety plan. And we say, you know, keep this with you. And when you need it, pull it out of your wallet or your pocket or, you know, have it clipped to your uh, refrigerator with a magnet and have a copy of it in your nightstand and in your car. And, you know, when you're experiencing 
warning signs, this is kind of your emergency plan. And that works for many folks. That's helped many folks. But in this digital age, we also have people that are tied to their cell phones all the time and can benefit from really having access to their safety plan in their pocket, in their phone. Again, that's not for everybody. Some people do prefer the paper plan, but we wanted to create an option. Another, um, another asset that comes with creating a digital or mobile version is that we can link resources within the app in ways that you can't really do with a paper plan. You can't push the paper plan and call the crisis line. You can do that with the app. You can dial your support contacts. You can dial the veterans crisis line or the regular uh, lifeline if you're not a veteran directly from your plan. If you have one of the really key features of PTSD coaches that has all these nice coping tools embedded, audio guided exercises, breathing exercises, motivational quotes. You can even create your own coping tool. If there's something that's worked for you, whether it's video media, audio media, written words, and it's not in the app, you can actually create it yourself and build it into the app and then import that into your safety plan. So if one of my coping tools is deep breathing and I find that taking slow, deep breaths when I'm, when I'm escalating or heading into a crisis, I can, act, I can write deep breathing in my plan or I can actually, and or I can actually import that audio guided deep breathing tool. So if I don't have the wherewithal to kind of guide myself through a deep breathing exercise when I'm escalating, I can have that right at the touch of a button in my plan. So a number of features that really elevate the digital plan above and beyond the paper plan. Now there, when we were doing our research leading up to putting the proposal in for this funding, we did actually look at what's out there there are versions of the safety plan available and, and, and accessible through your app marketplaces, the Apple App Store or um, Google Play. And what we found was that none of them really matched what we were asking veterans to do in our VA safety plan. They're not a perfect um, fit so that if a veteran creates a safety plan on paper with their provider and then they want to load those sit, that same plan into their phone, it's not really going to map on to what was what's currently um, available. So we wanted to make a version that's really compatible with what we're asking veterans to do in VA and with what's been researched by um, the creators and developers of the safety plan, Dr. Greg Brown and uh, Dr. Barbara Stanley. They really created the safety plan to be a provider-led intervention. And in ideal circumstances, the um, veteran is or the patient is working with their trained provider to create this collaboratively and getting that guidance. Now we do know that there is a gap in care in terms of in terms of those that are being seen in VA care versus the number of veterans out there in the community. We know that over half of those veterans who die by suicide are not connected to VA care and we know that there are these tools that are available out there if somebody is so motivated to look for a safety plan and try to develop it themselves or with their family member, that they can access those. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, all of our apps are publicly available and free to the public, that we had a version out there that can reach those, those veterans and those folks who are otherwise not getting the help that they need. And with the idea that, um, that our apps can also serve as a bridge to care. So we, again, include the crisis line in all of our apps, as well as information about connecting to VA care, connecting to community care, finding a provider, learning information about what treatment looks like for PTSD or other, other concerns. So that for folks who are just kind of wanting to dip their toe into the water of mental health treatment, they're getting information from a reliable source and getting information that can lead them into the hands of uh, professional providers if they eventually make the choice to do so. That was a long tangent. I need a breath. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that was really thorough, really good uh, breakdown. And, you know, I was struck by a few things. One was that obviously this was designed with veterans in mind, but that it's open to anyone. It's available free through the app store. And these are the kind of tools that anybody could, could benefit from. And I was also really struck by that integration. The fact that you said maybe in a paper plan, you know, you say you're going to 
do a mindfulness exercise, but then you then have to take that extra step. But here within the app, it's sort of integrated and you can connect directly to the crisis line or directly to the contact saved in your phone or to the uh, breathing apps or photos of your family, et cetera. It, it's fantastic. So what, what else did you want to talk to us about in terms of the app features uh, within the safety plan? Yeah, a couple of things. So one thing I want to mention is um, that's another feature of the digital uh, version of the safety plan is that you can actually export it. So one of the things that's recommended in safety planning is that you go ahead and share your safety plan with loved ones, with those supportive contacts that you plan on reaching out to when you are in crisis. And that can be hard to do when you just have a paper plan, you know, who has a photocopy machine or I don't, I don't even know how you do that. If you choose to, you can export the plan, a digital PDF to yourself securely and then forward it along to the people in your life or even your provider that you would like to have a copy of your plan. Another feature that I think is, well, a couple other features that I think are really key. You know, I don't do as much direct clinical care as I used to because I'm in this role of running a large national project. But when I was doing a lot of safety planning with veterans, I don't remember getting trained on how to do it. I just remember it popping up as a reminder in the health record and kind of following the steps and reading what it said on the, on the paper plan or in the template and kind of, go, you know, now I know there are trainings in online and in TMS, our talent management system in VA. Um, there's been a lot of work towards making that training available to providers. There's a 40 something page manual, which who has time to read, but there's a lot of good information in there. But if you're a provider and you're not, you don't have that manual memorized and you're going through the app with the veteran, there's actually little info buttons that will cue you on what each step is supposed to entail. So I just think that's super valuable for providers and for veterans who, and, and members of the public who might be um, developing plans independently. There's also a comprehensive, so step six is actually a step called something like keeping my environment safe. Like how can we decrease the likelihood that you are going to access some kind of lethal means and use it. I know for sure in my training, I never got any info on how to talk to veterans about guns. And that is everyone's least favorite thing to do if you haven't been trained on it. Because the first thing they're gonna worry about is are you gonna take away my guns? I, I tell them, you know, I don't want anything to do with your guns. <laughs> I, um, you know, I'm not gonna take them away, but let's make this be a collaborative conversation with that part of you that wants to live and wants to create a plan to increase the likelihood that you're gonna survive when these demons do come up again. And let's talk about how we can practice gun safety in those times. So it doesn't mean, you know, and the, and the safety plan goes through information, things I, I never even knew about in terms of safe storage, um, et cetera. There's a whole list in there and you can go through and they can actually be empowered to decide what they want to do to keep themselves safe. And it doesn't have to be forever. It can be, you know, when I'm getting twitchy and I'm having those warning signs, um, what are the things I need to do to safely store my weapons until I can come back down to a rational way of thinking? And who can I enlist in my family that I can trust to hold on to my firearms or to keep me safe from myself if and when that's needed? Um, so those are conversations that can be really uncomfortable. And I think the app provides information to give us more confidence to talk to our, our um, family members who are veterans, our patients who are veterans, anyone who may be a gun owner and, um, and have risk factors for suicide who need support with that. Yeah, it's so helpful to, to see the app and, and have it in your hands. I, I did download it. I think it breaks down some of that confusion or, or lack of clarity of what is safety planning and how can it help me, you know, as the person who downloaded the app, it just helps navigate what that means. It has commonly asked questions and mm -hmm. breaks down that, that sense of mystery about safety planning. And the important thing is that safety planning is done when you're not in crisis, when you're at, in, a, in a cool, calm state of mind and you're planning ahead. We don't hope that anybody ever goes 
to that dark place again, but we want to recognize that it's a possibility and be prepared for when and if it does. And we know that when, um, when folks are in suicidal crisis, they are not necessarily thinking straight. Like our thoughts are going every which way and are sometimes not the most rational. And so what can we put in place when we are thinking clearly? And so that when, um, when we escalate, we can buy ourselves some time because we know that suicidal crises don't last forever. There's kind of a, a wave and then it, it'll die down. Often, you know, there's some research that indicates that the timeline from impulse to action can be as few as five minutes um, to an hour. So a lot of times people are having these impulses and acting and we just need to extend the time, give, give the crisis time to pass. So that's why the safety plan includes things like, where can I go to just let this wear off? You know, where can I go to be safe? Who can I call, even if I'm not to the point where I need to call someone like help, I need, I need, this is a crisis call, but who can I call when I notice my thoughts going in that direction and I just need to get out of my head? You know, in my clinical practice, I would talk to veterans who would say, I don't, I don't have anybody, you know, and that's a fair response. Sometimes, you know, you might be in a place in your life where you've burned bridges or you've lost people and, um, and social support is one of the most protective factors here and so actually embedded in PTSD coach and we and you can push the button from the safety plan to this portion of the app is tips on building social support um, so that people can actually you know it's okay if you don't have a crisis support right now but how can you what are what are some strategies that you can start to implement so that you can start building that support network um, and so there's information on that in the app as well another thing that you don't get when you're just working with a two-dimensional paper plan Right, right. And I mean, you mentioned earlier how we're in this digital age and now more than ever, this new era of COVID, folks are turning to digital tools for support. And I, I just think it, it's it obviously so timely, but also like really needed. Maybe this is a little bit of a tangent, but like how are safety plans maybe changing or, or being uh, adapted in this new era in terms of what types of uh, support and what types of tools do people have available to them? It's a really good question. And we just, we just talked this through as a team because actually in the app, we give examples of for the step where we identify, um, where we ask the user to identify places to go for a distraction. And the examples we give are like, you know, the coffee shop or the park. And a lot of those places are closed now. So we're rethinking what are the, the options for folks during, um, during COVID. What's a re, you know, can it, it might look more like, can I go to the backyard and cool off um, or, or things like that. And we've actually, a couple of things also, you make a good point about a lot of people aren't now being able to be seen in person for care. And uh, VA has made a lot of headway in recent years towards establishing and expanding telehealth services for veterans for mental health. That's been greatly expanded just in recent weeks due to the, um, the COVID-19 pandemic. Apps like the uh, PTSD coach and, um, and the safety plan can actually help with this in some ways. One is that you know, you're not there face-to-face -face creating a safety plan with the veteran. So yes, you can, potentially email or sorry, attach as a secure message, the PDF version of the safety plan and, or you can have them following along in the app if they have a smartphone and are interested in doing it that way. Um, a lot of our apps also have assessment measures built in. And so a big, a big thing that we've been expanding in VA mental health is measurement based care so that we are administering assessment measures as part of treatment, as part of mental health treatment, so that we're kind of getting a temperature check of how things are going through treatment and, and, and using that data to have a conversation with the veteran about progress. You know, are we going up? Are we going down? What, what is going on in your life that could be contributing to this? And it can be really hard because our, our general method of administering measures in VA has been paper and pencil. And so what happens when you're, when you're um, doing telehealth? 
So the apps can actually facilitate that. We actually just released, the mobile apps team at um, the National Center for PTSD just released a new app called COVID Coach. And this was developed to help um, folks manage stress related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, very similar to PTSD Coach, it also has embedded education, links to resources, coping tools for managing stress. People are dealing with unprecedented stress related to being isolated, managing parenting, young children who are home from school, health anxiety, all, uh, financial anxiety, all kinds of things. And so the COVID Coach app uh, provides a lot of tools for managing all of that. It also has built-in assessment measures. So one for mood called the PHQ-9, which is a standard measure for depression used in, in VA, one for anxiety called the GAD-7, and also the PCL-5, which is our standard um, assessment self-report measure for PTSD symptoms. And what we're seeing is that uh, providers who typically administer these measures in session are now able to guide the veteran to download the app um, not only to use those helpful stress management tools and to get links to reliable uh, sources of information around COVID-19, but to self-administer those assessment measures and to report back to the provider on their scores or to even export their data to the provider. So it's, it's serving a lot of purposes in this difficult time. Wonderful. Yeah, I love that. Um along with their provider, provider can use that to help track symptoms and progress and an improvement hopefully within that obviously we want to make sure that we're following good data safety security privacy practices as as you obviously can imagine this is very personal um, responses to those questions and so i'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about how the app was developed with obviously that sort of in mind at the center of it and how veterans can follow good practices for securing their data? Yeah, so uh, thank you for bringing that up. That's a really important question. Um, so actually two things, because there's one thing I didn't mention before, and that is that there is just so much information out there on the internet, in apps, and more than half of adults these days are, are looking to the internet to find out health information. And there's a lot of unreliable or questionable information out there. So another, another important thing about the VA apps is that they are, they provide sound guidance, sound information that's been um, evidence informed. Um, so I wanna mention that first, cause I think that's important and also helps um, our veterans and providers narrow down our, the tools we use like, okay, there's 10 or sometimes I've heard estimates of 30 or 50,000 mental health apps out there. How do I narrow that down, you know? And you're in pretty right. good hands if you um, select VA apps for a couple of reasons. So one being that the, the content is going to be sound. There's not going to be any snake oil, so to speak, in our apps. Second is probably just as important is privacy. So VA mobile mental health apps are held to an extremely rigorous uh, privacy standard. So unlike apps that are out there in the public, other apps that are out there in the public, we don't charge for anybody to use our apps. So um, they're all free and there are no in-app purchases. We do not collect or store any identifiable information. So nothing that you enter into the app is going anywhere off of your device. Now there is some de-identified general information that is provide that is fed back in an anonymous way, such as how many people have downloaded the apps and some anonymous usage type data. But um, for example, that and it's a double-edged sword because uh, as a research center, you know, we would love to have that data and see how people are are using our apps. But we really have to protect the privacy of the veterans and the end users above and beyond anything else. So just as an example, we got a question today from a VA, I think in Florida, wanting to know, you know, how many people in Florida, how many veterans in Florida have downloaded the safety plan? We wanna see if we're getting, you know, good use out of this thing down here. And the closest we can come, we can't tell if it's a veteran or non-veteran downloading. The, app, the closest we can get is number of downloads by country code. So we can tell you how many, users in the US have downloaded 
PTSD coach. We can tell you how many users in France have downloaded PTSD coach, but we can't tell you who those people are or where they're geographically located or anything like that. So when we train providers on introducing uh, VA mobile apps to their patients, we really train them in saying, look, you know, I'm not going to be able to see anything that you're entering in this app unless you show it to me face to face or, you know, you hold it up to the camera on telehealth. Um, nothing that you enter into your device is going to be read by the VA or, or anybody else. And then the second thing that's important to teach folks is that your phone is only as secure as it is when it's passcode protected. So anybody who can physically get into your device can see what you put into an app. Um, so we always want to encourage folks to put a pin on their device. Mm, yeah, thank you. That's really reassuring because I know, like you mentioned, and I think um, unfortunately, or for better or for worse, you know, this COVID pandemic has brought that to people's attention that much more that this, you know, I think in the past, maybe, you know, there maybe wasn't enough information when these pandemics happened. And now it's this overload and being able to have a trusted vetted source. I, I mean, for me, that's, that's huge. And I'm sure for our listeners as well. So uh, again, I really appreciate uh, you bringing that up. And, and also, like you mentioned, it is private and it is yours, but if you choose to share it, you have these options to export data out of the app, which again, I think is really helpful um, to bring your safety plan into a PDF, maybe to share with, as you mentioned, the, the loved ones that you might be turning to and, and whatnot. So it kind of allows that customization based on the person's preferences. Absolutely. You know, I've mentioned a lot about working with providers and helping them to enhance or extend the care that they provide to veterans via apps. Um, I do want to emphasize, and we always emphasize this, that a mobile app is not a stand-in for treatment. These aren't intended to replace care with a provider. I think that's a very important um, thing to note. They can extend care in that uh, uh, in between sessions, a veteran um, may have homework or may be able to access in the moment coping tools that they wouldn't otherwise have, or they can track symptoms um, or access information and use the app as a supportive tool. Our apps really fall into two categories. And one of those is self-help or self-management tools. And PTSD Coach is one of those. It can be used really with or without a provider. So somebody in the, in the public can download it, pick it up, use it on their own, use it how they want, and hopefully benefit from it and or a provider might introduce it to a veteran and use it to supplement the care and coping that they're providing. Now we do have a few um, apps that are called treatment companion apps that really go hand in hand with treatment protocols. For example, PE coach for prolonged exposure therapy for PTSD. So if a provider is doing that trauma-focused therapy with a veteran, instead of that veteran carrying around a a binder full of handouts and a tape recorder to record their sessions, which is part of that protocol, they're, they're actually able to have all of that info self-contained in the app to support that treatment, which is, um, which is really cool. The other thing I wanted to mention about self-care apps is, as I mentioned, they can be used by anybody and they can be shared with veterans by anybody. So I mentioned before that we have, you know, a large swath of veterans that, that could benefit from mental health treatment and or just stress support like the rest of us who aren't connected to VA care or those that are connected to VA care that are maybe seen in primary care, outpatient appointments, audiology, lots of veterans with hearing issues that, that come to their audiology appointments or that go see chaplains or peers or other services and they're never going to set foot in mental health either because of stigma or because they don't quite, they're not quite ill enough, um, or they don't think they need it, or they don't want it, or just time and life getting in the way. And mental health treatment is really, can be challenging. It's not, you know, it's not a walk in the park and it's not, not everybody's ready um, or not everyone believes they're ready. So um, as part of my national project, what we're doing is we are working with audiologists. We're working with chaplains. We're working with peer support specialists and others. And introducing the apps to them and talking to them about how they can talk to the veterans they see about apps for self-care so that you know even if you just see a veteran one time in your practice 
um, in whatever setting you're, you're in, they leave that, that meeting with a tool that they didn't have before. And I just think that's, um, that's so important. You know, the idea came to me because we started this community of practice for mostly for providers, we thought, um, who were interested in integrating mobile mental health apps in care. And we know we're like, who are all these people on the call? And we noticed we had dietitians calling in. We had people from all different service lines, all different walks of life, uh, all different professions. And we're like, wow, you know, maybe there's applications for these applications. Sorry, I went there. Um, you know, outside of mental health. And um, and I think we're 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 gonna see a lot of banks. Take a second. Yeah, we'll we'll just <laughs> take that out. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. I'm so, I'm so glad you mentioned that, you know, when we, you know, a lot of times in suicide prevention, we talk about, oh, not everyone receives VA care. And then, like you mentioned, even within veterans who are seeing VA care, not all of them are seeing mental health. And so any touch point we can use to help get resources into the hands of folks who need it, obviously, is a wonderful thing. So you mentioned also that you help providers have these conversations and, and maybe provide some resources to help introduce mm -hmm. uh, these mobile app tools. Could you say a little bit more about that? I mentioned this national project that we're doing, and it's actually in VA and DOD. So I'm the lead in VA, and we have selected one facility per visit as a starting point. In each facility, we are doing a workshop, and that includes providers and non-providers, and we teach them all of these skills about, um, one, the rationale and evidence base for our mobile apps, privacy and security, how to introduce an app, why to introduce an app, and we go through different use cases, walk through the apps, and just everyone hopefully leaves feeling comfortable uh, using mobile apps, recommending them to veterans in, in whatever role that they serve. At each of those facilities, we identify what we're calling an mHealth specialist or champion, and this is a typically a provider that is identified as kind of the, the lead at their facility for all things mobile mental health um, related. And we are working with them for three or so months, but the idea is that they will, that will have a long-term lasting relationship with these facilities across visions. And that ideally the, these facilities will become leaders in mHealth adoption and expand throughout their vision. That's my, that's my vision anyway, so that, as many VA staff as possible are equipped to teach veterans about, about these mobile apps. And I, you know, and another thing we teach is not to oversell or undersell apps. If a veteran says, nah, I'm not interested, or no, nah, I don't have a smartphone, that's fine. We back off. We're cool. Okay, how you know, here's the other ways that I can help you. Um, but for for the folks that are are interested and have access to the technology. Um, and more and more do now with, um, with VA issued devices. Um, we really want to make sure that they know about these resources and are able to use them. Yeah, one of the things, and I mentioned earlier that I had downloaded it, you know, I, I think it's really helpful for folks to download it themselves. You know, if you're a provider listening, go ahead and download the app and, and give, it a, give it a spin yourself so that you're familiar with it. I think that familiarity will help people be able to you know, explain it to the patients that they're seeing as well. Absolutely. That's one of the things we teach, you know, just like you wouldn't recommend a book to somebody that you haven't read, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to tell someone to use an app that you haven't vetted for yourself. Is it consistent with the kinds of things you would be talking to a veteran about anyway? And are you able to answer basic questions about how to use it? What's in it? Why do I use it? Um, things like that. So yeah, you can't sell it if you're not buying it yourself. Right on. I wanted to highlight some other resources that I've, I've, uh, that I know you're, you're a part of or, or helping lead. What, uh, what is this PBI network lecture series? Yes, the Practice Based Implementation Network CE lecture series. Um, so the PBI network is kind of the overarching brand or umbrella for all of the projects that I lead. We run a, um, a monthly lecture series on a variety of topics all related to technology. We try to go above and beyond um, the suite of apps that our immediate team is responsible for. So we invite folks from other agencies and other departments to share their innovative uh, uh, knowledge and experience 
in things related to tech and the provision of, uh, of mental health care or self-care. And so, for example, um, I mentioned audiology. Last month, I believe, we had um, a PhD audiologist share about um, using mobile mental health apps as an adjunct to, um, to progressive tinnitus management care for veterans in audiology um, clinics. And this month, we have Dr. Kelly Blasco from the DOD talking about Virtual Hope Box, which is another really excellent app developed um, over in the Defense Health Agency that is, has also been recommended for, uh, for veterans who experience um, suicidal uh, um, urges. That lecture series is open to people in VA, people outside of VA. It's typically focused towards, we, we ask our presenters to focus their content towards an audience that um, includes both researchers and clinicians. So we're getting a sense of the, the evidence behind what, and the research behind what they're talking about, as well as the clinical applicability, but anybody can attend. Just wanted to confirm, you know, that this yeah. is open to everybody, so that's great. Yes, and I know there's going to be um, an attachment with, with resources, but I want to emphasize that if you want an invitation to our CE lecture series um, or any questions about any of our apps or materials, you are welcome to email us at mobilementalhealth at va.gov. Those emails will be received by me as well as three or four members of my team. We all have different areas of expertise and we try to get back to folks within a day or two. Great, thank you. And we'll definitely put some links up uh, to make sure folks can find these resources easily. As we start to wind down today, I mean, I know that, again, we've talked about this sort of new era with telehealth and mental health and incorporating tech into care. What is, uh, you know, your vision for the future of, of mobile mental health? Well, in terms of telehealth, I, I believe it's VA's vision that all providers will eventually be equipped to provide services uh, remotely as appropriate. And I similarly have a vision that all providers, all VA staff really, all veterans and members of the public will be aware of our suite of, of apps and know where to download them and, and at least give them a shot. I think we have a lot, a lot to give and a lot of people that just come back to us and say, oh my gosh, I didn't know this stuff was available. Thank you. Within our apps, we get, we now have our email address linked. So we get emails from veterans and members of the public nearly every day. Things like, I, you know, I tried mindfulness coach. I've been to six different mindfulness groups in VA and this is the first time I was actually able to do it. So people that are, are, picking up our stuff and responding to it and finding it helpful. It's not gonna be helpful to every single person. I by no means can guarantee that, but just to give people the chance to have access to tools that they otherwise might not have access to and to, to be able to do it from their own home, I think is, is really powerful. Thank you, yeah, thank you to, to, to you, to your team, to all the folks obviously involved in, in putting together um, these apps and, and, and helping to disseminate them and, and train providers on them. So, you know, uh, it takes the whole team, I'm sure. Absolutely. I, I joke that I'm just the hype man for this stuff, but I've got a, a, a team <laughs> of extremely um, talented researchers, developers, subject matter experts um, that have been doing this for a long time. And um, I'm just honored to be able to be in, in a role where I can uh, get the word out and help people to make use of, of the wonderful products that the team has created. Excellent. Well, uh, that's going to do it for today's episode. Uh, we absolutely welcome any feedback, comments, um, experiences using the app, anything you'd like to share. Uh, please uh, reach out to us or, or as uh, Pearl mentioned, mobilementalhealth at va.gov. Thank you again for joining us today, Pearl. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Until next time, join us for more interviews in important work in the world of veterans' mental health, resiliency, and suicide prevention. Thanks, everybody.